a good thing Colin Roach them come there hear the song for the tape. Because Colin Roach come mix him song himself. And Colin Roach an engineer too, you know. Yeah. So Colin Roach come mix him song and hear Kappa Shot and mix it down too. Well, I wasn't there when he voiced it. I was there when it got mixed. I know Prento had something to do with that. Mm -hmm. But yeah, like he said, I carried the dats. Up so. Mm -hmm. So I said, they said no. I said yes. It's not, and we're not in Jamaica, we're going to New York. Put that on the dat. Mm. You know what I mean? But Jenny uh, Wanda make me bust. Yeah. Never know. Jenny Wanda know. Put out it. Miss Goody Goody Pan. Put up yourself, Jenny Wanda. And then put Bun Tequila Kappa Shot Pan. It just came out of like the underground, like with a fury. I, I didn't know. I like the song. Mm. You know what I mean? I'm trying to give him a chance because now. Everybody's gone around there. We have to bring somebody. You know, we have to, we have to, okay, the camp, so we have to bust somebody from here. You know what I mean? From the camp as a bus. So, in flip side, I saw the people in Vine Kappa Shot now because Goody Goody had a big song. The Alexa P and Colin Roach. So, the one I knew you have Miss Goody Goody. So, everybody were buying Miss Goody Goody. End up with the Kappa Shot by the next side. I know. Johnny did that. Yeah, Johnny oh, wanted to oh, do that. Bounty Killer, one of the greatest dancehall artists in history, had a hard time. Getting his break in the music business, even though at the time he was working very hard to get his break, but nothing much was happening for him until he recorded a song called Copper Shot and Uncle T's Session, one of King Jammy's brother. And this song was not really accepted by the boss King Jammy's, but what happened next is astonishing. Yo, yo, one of the East Side Dance Hall, Lincoln Terrad Records. One of the Takai Town in Dance Hall, Lincoln Terrad Records. Yo, Antaraj, the meat you know it from man, you rockedness. Bless up, bless up, and welcome back to Antaraj Records. Ya new via here, please consider subscribing. Turn on your post notification bell so whenever. I make a new upload, you can be the first to be notified. Well, this is the untold stories of how Bounty Killer get his boss. Many might lay a claim to help with Bounty Killer or bossing Bounty Killer or bossing some of his songs or whatever. But this is the true story of how Rodney Basil Price, aka Bounty Killer, got boss in the dancehall music industry. So whether you follow dancehall or not, Bounty Killer is a name that most people will be familiar with and not just only for his musical accolades and winning a Grammy Award with a collab called A-Baby with the pop group no doubt but also for his social intervention by keeping heads of government on their tours. Bounty Killer is arguably the most influential artist in modern dancehall history Maybe Ninja Man might have something to say about that. But he is also thoroughly respected for many reasons like his prolific catalogue of recordings, his stylistic impact on the art of DJing, his advocacy for ghetto youths, not to mention the many artists he helped to bust or break into the music business. Even the most casual dancehall fan should be aware of the major stars who benefited from Killer's support early in their careers. Without Killer's co-sign, the world might never have experienced the talents of Elephant Man, Mavado, Busy Signal, or even a Vibes Cartel, just to name a few. With no cartel, we'd have no Pokemon Empire, no Popcorn, and so on and so forth. But who helped Bounty Killer boss in the music world? And at that, we are going to explore right no well, i wasn't there when he voiced it i was there when it got mixed i know prento has something to do with that mm -hmm. but yeah like he said i carried the dats up so mm -hmm. so i said they said no i said yes it's not and we're not in jamaica we're going to new york put that on the dat mm -hmm. you know what i mean we're going to new york what they don't <laughs> care you can play copy shot 20, 20 times and not even to have no clean nothing nothing nobody would know the difference yeah. You know what I'm saying? So we're going to New York. We're not going here, put it on the dat. Boom. Of course we're going up there. We know say, you know, that the that 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 uh Roach and 
Galaxy P, I'm going good with the tune and everything. I'm going because you get that vibe. Mm -hmm. So I said, you know what? I believe in this tune and the kid. So let me just put it here and we'll put it on, you know, we'll put it out through the regular channels we do with VP as a single. And that's what happened. And there you go. And then we, you know, the whole thing through Brooklyn. Mm -hmm. You're to, yeah, you're my, I am my person. You're, what? You're going to do what to kill it in Brooklyn? No, sir. You're not going to do nothing to kill it in Brooklyn. Bone to Killer was a member of the King Jammers family earlier in his career. And we all say King Jammers bust Bone to Killer and he was the first record killer and nurture his talent. But as Killer remind us so often that it was Uncle T, King Jammers' brother, who had a session on the weekend when Studio Yard wasn't that full. That's how he got the opportunity to record the famous song Copper Shot that would bring him to the world. But there was more to it than getting his song produced under King Jammer's label. But if it wasn't one Italian youth from Brooklyn named Johnny Wanda, then maybe we wouldn't have known or heard about Rodney Price, alias Bounty Killer. So Copper Shot came out here now. This went, this blew up big in New York. Oh, so then, crazy. I was at Superpower when they played the Bayside. side. Okay. We didn't even, the first couple of things, everybody was just coming. They didn't even have to name the song. Just put the blue label in the air. Yo, give me that. Give me that. Give me mm -hmm. that. Superpower alone on a Saturday mm -hmm. is the only place I've ever seen that type of thing. The year was 1992. Rodney Price was a youth from Seaview Gardens in Western Kingston with aspirations to become a dancehall artist. It was hard enough just getting through the Iron Gate outside King Jammy's legendary studio at 38 St. Lucia Road in Waterhouse. Security was tough and no idlers were allowed inside to mingle with the biggest artist in Jamaica. But once he made it inside, he discovered that the yard could be a big waiting room for unproven talents. Getting the chance to record a song was a next level challenge. He called himself Bounty Hunter and later changed the name to Bounty Killer. His first big break came when he recorded a double special for the selector Sky Juice that caught some play on the mighty Metro Media sound system. It was a clash tune called Dub for Dub and Killer's booming voice cut through the rhythm making sound boy's ear perk up all over the world. And as Killer said, Sky Juice bust dub for dub for Metro Media. And I saw Jammy's them give me little leverage in the yard. King Jammy first realized that the youth from Seaview had some potential when overseas selectors started requesting Bounty Killer's dub plate. And him said, me realize my name a come on the list for dub plate from foreign and me not have no song. I owe him, me no voice him and people are sent for song. Serious thing that in a yard, your name come up on dub list and you have no song. Take him up. James' brother, Uncle T. James, made a record of Dub for Dub that got some play in Jamaica, but Killer's real boss was still to come. When he got the chance to voice on Jamie's lick of the general rhythm, he laid down some lyrics inspired by a real life incident when he was struck by a stray bullet while walking through his ghetto community. From man back him gun, blood like a run. Like a river Jordan, I come down. Killer chanted. King Jamie was not feeling the gun lyrics at all. He was a man of respect a pillar of the Waterhouse community and he didn't want his sound system to be associated with road boy business because Jamis those days did prefer the vocalist them and Jamis also want to make sure say, his songs got ready played but there was Johnny Wanda who had grew up in the streets of New York during the 1980s and he met King Jamis while traveling to Jamaica and spending time in Waterhouse he introduced himself as a New York distributor and that's how the link was formed so King Jamis wasn't too much interested in Copper Shot, but he was more interested in the Goody Goody, a cover of Oleta Adams' poignant ballad, Get Here If You Can, sung by Colin Roach and Galaxy P on the same rhythm. And Bounty Killer recalled the whole thing and how it manifested. A good thing Colin Roach them come there, hear the song for the tape, because Colin Roach come mix him song himself. And Colin Roach an engineer too, you know. Yeah. So Colin Roach come mix in song and hear Copper Shot and mix it down too. 
Live, it's like how we can get for chop and this and that. <laughs> that you have to, one, with, you have to one take. Yeah. You can't no, you can run it more time in it, but you have to run the whole song. So yeah. Miss Goody Goody had a big song and a Colin Roach for mixing one song and he mixed down my one side there and the big song that that can set them time there. So it reached on the big song that and then now them send it that they're firing. Johnny wonder the man who released the sitting them up there. So anyone that doesn't know about King Atta, about you know, one gun song and that and that. So anyone that doesn't know, so the dad come and cover shot the panic and the shit's bad. And then he goes and put out 12 inch car, 12 inch every time there. I never realized that Johnny Wanda did have such an integral part. And Johnny Wanda met me, boss? Yeah. Never know. Johnny Wanda know. Put out Miss Goody Goody Pan. Pick up yourself, Johnny Wanda. And then put Bunty Killer, cover shot, pan it fucking flip side. I saw the people in Vine Kappa Shot now because Goody Goody had a big song. They had like P and Colin Roach. So the one I knew York was Miss Goody Goody. So everybody were by Miss Goody Goody. End up with the Kappa Shot by next side. You know, Johnny did that. Yeah, oh, Johnny wanted to do that. Brother, you know King never that, that, that is a plug that name in a bro, bro. Yeah, yeah that's why me and Johnny wanted to end up so close in the end and all that. Because Johnny wanted to have everything to do with my success. True. Yes. Johnny wanted to help me big too, you know. Johnny wanted to help me. New York? A lot of people. General, <coughs> over there in New York, General wanna carry me everywhere you now. I'll make sure I say, you know, I mean, you don't know me and me is not a brother what me need. I need a body for telling me. Distribution, yeah, when we help producers. Yeah. What, what, what do you know again? Apelos until Apelos, about yeah, yeah. 21st now. Yeah, yeah. You understand? Because him at the 21st and Apelos are Apelos. And now he's going for the month to 21st. Everywhere, dog. Yeah, but General wanna play a big part in the development of dancer. Not just one to kill a career, True. with many careers. Many. Yeah, so at that note, Johnny Wanda, the man who put it out and then it run with New York. That's why I say me have a thing there, Brooklyn. Because Brooklyn, it run the first in a couple of shot bus, a foreign before it come a yard. You know? yeah. A dub for dub, me did have a Jamaica, you know. Mm. Sky Juice bus, a dub for dub. But I met you, me there. And I saw Jamis then give me the club, leveraging at the yard, because I realized me name a company list for dub plate from foreign, I mean, I know Sass. That's true. How we, man? No retreating into the. Me no vice him <laughs> and people are sent for song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Serious thing that in the yard. Yeah. Your name come and double this. And you know what I'm saying? Take him out. Time up around No, it's in your water. Yeah, because they know something about that boy. Yeah, take him out. Yes, I saw that. In the waiting room again. Still out, man. Yeah, <laughs> Conference yeah. room in there, right? You can pass the security when you come now. You get the yeah, energy. Yeah. Your, your ID. Mm -hmm. Yes, I saw. The things start being up now. I mean, King is a cup of shot to cover New York. He never had a business. Oh, put it up. All right, he never had a wife. As Bounty Killer said, when King Jamis realized the cup of shot gone to the door, it blew up, it exploded, and everything to that matter. That's when King Jamis no had a business again. He went full speed ahead with Bounty Killer, which also led to Bounty Killer my experience album and all of this that was taking place was because of the work of johnny wanda who believed in the song copper shot and who just wanted to give a ghetto youth a youth from the underground a boss in dance hall. this song just you know it just came out of like the underground like with a fury I didn't know. I like the song. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? I'm trying to give him a chance because now everybody's gone wrong there. We have to bring somebody. You know, we have to, we have to, we're at the camp, so we have to bust somebody from here. You know what I mean? From the camp as a bus. So concentration on top of, yeah, let's deal with what's already hot. Mm -hmm. But concentration is on um, to get somebody on the come up. And that's where that came from. Mm -hmm. And it was a fast come up. You understand because from you know from i mean bobby will tell you and they would tell you that was playing on the radio it was playing on w you know that back then we had wnwk and all of that you know we had a lot like you know they they were on bls i mean it played it played right alongside you know mm -hmm. um goody goody and all them other songs someone bless up boom shots and also entertaining podcast with muscle because um we use some clips and also some information from, from um, Boomshot as well. So Johnny Wanda give us first hand of exactly what happened and how Bounty Killer 
fought in the game. And Bounty Killer also gave us an inside when I talked to Sirani, I believe. Me could know, say, this is how it happened. This is what happened during my coming up in the game. And a Johnny Wanda bust him. Killer went on to do a lot of great things in the dancehall industry and also cross over in a hip hop pop and the world works and earn himself a Grammy. Many people or many selectors had laid claim to being a part of Bounty Killer's career. But if it wasn't for Johnny Wanda, maybe we would have not known how good or how great Rodney Basil Price, alias Bounty Killer, is. If you are not subscribers, please leave your thoughts, your comment, in the comment section so we can talk about it. We've come to the end of another video. Thanks for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel those who haven't done so as yet. Also, please turn on your post notification bell so whenever I make a new upload, you can be the first to be notified. Peace out. Bless up. I'll definitely catch you in the next one.